Good morning and welcome back to another episode of the show. Today I'm joined by offensive line coach at Ohio University, Alan Rudolph. Thanks for coming back on for part two, coach. Good morning, Braden. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you, coach? I'm doing good. Where where are you located right now, man? You I'm, look uh, Hey, I'm hanging out by the lake, you know, trying to enjoy this uh, southern Ontario summer as much as I can. That is awesome. What lake? Uh, lake Simcoe up here in Barrie. Okay, cool. That's awesome. Wish I was up there with you, brother. Man, wish you were too, man. Well, Braden, we kind of finished up uh, last time with cover, cover gap combos, so we're going to dive into uncovered gap combos. And just just a just a reminder, um, you know, what we're, what we're talking about, if we're talking about a combo between the center and guard and if there's a defender in the gap, we just define that as a covered gap combo. So what we're going to start with today is, hey, still that same combo, but now that defender is not in the gap. Uh, and we just call that an uncovered gap combo or an empty gap combo. Um, and kind of some rules as we look at it, um, the first thing that, that we want to do is um, – it's going to be a three-step, uh, a, a three-knee read um, by by our uncovered lineman, and we'll get into that. But on the front side of an uncovered gap combo, uh, we really stress keeping air pumped in the zone. Um, a lot of times, if we get movement or we don't get movement into a gap, as we're going to talk about movement here in just a minute, but but we will teach our lineman to actually bang back into and find contact back. If we're uh, uncovered gap on the front side of zone, we don't teach them to do that. We teach them to knee read, and we'll talk about the individual footwork and everything, but we want them to stay vertical here and not create a double team there unless we're getting violent movement coming toward him. That way we can keep air pumped in the front side of the zone. That's like we talked about the other day. I want to keep this bubble in the defense as big a bubble as I possibly can. So we want to get, if I don't get movement here or movement here, I want to get this guard from point A to point B on contact on the backer as quickly as I can and, and create or maintain that bubble as we're trying to now create, we talked about vertical distortion in the combos last week. Now I want to create lateral distortion because of my landmark on this uh, combo right here. So our landmark uh, is still going to be sternum, but now we want him to uh, get a little bit of lateral distortion in the drive block. And now we want to pump as much air in the zone as we possibly can. If we bang back here, we're going to give our back a different read because he is reading the first down defender front side of the ball as a base rule uh, in our belly scheme. Okay, So if we cover that defender with color, okay, uh, because we bang back off the knee read, then that back is going to perceive it completely different. So we try to keep air pumped in it. So now, hey, if we do cover front side color for the back, then the ball's going to stay front side. But if not, that should stretch. That should stretch and create lateral distortion. And now that ball will stay north and south, but behind the A gap. So we want to pump air in the front side of, uh, of the zone. So we teach them, hey, do not bang back. Stay vertical on an, on an uncovered or an empty gap combo. Okay. As we get to it fundamentally, um, the, the, this guard right here, his footwork, okay, is going to be, uh, and, and I teach a small scooch right here. Anytime we're uncovered, they're going to small scooch. Last year, that was a change. Last year, uh, we bucket step and knee red. This year, we're going to small scooch just because I think that keeps us a little bit square, and I'm going to show you that on film. Uh, why we're going to make that change. But when you see film from us last year, you're actually going to see us um, uh, bucket stepping, 
okay? But we're changed that to a small baby scooch, okay? You can see that right there uh, in the knee read. But we want to read the knee of the defensive lineman that, in effect, we're comboing, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my footwork, and my eyes should snap to that knee right there. And we're looking for three things. We're looking for that knee going up the field or away from me. That's number one, okay? I'm looking for that knee coming on a 45-degree angle inside. That is number two, okay? Or I'm looking for that knee on a 90-degree angle or that knee really opening up, okay? That would be the third knee, and we will handle all three of those knees differently. Okay, if I get a knee that's up and away, that's telling me as a guard or a tackle, if we are double teaming a nine technique or a center, if we're double teaming a three technique, that is telling me to get vertical immediately. So an up or away knee, we want to get vertical right now so that that backer can't backflow. I'm going to show you a great uh, cut up of us doing it wrong where the uncovered guy runs a bow and he is just really, really loose. We got lucky that we didn't get back fitted on it, but, but uh, I'm going to show you the footwork that we don't want to take uh, so you can see that as well. So first, up or away, we want to get vertical right now. We will stick our backside hand uh, back here to try to feel for violent movement. We're not looking at violent movement from this guy but we will feel with our backside hand for violent movement. And we'll talk about how we handle that as well. Okay. If we get a 45 degree knee, that knee is going directly into B gap. That is a one gap movement. We're going to get our inside foot in the ground. So we're scooching. The minute that knee comes directly at me, I want to get that foot in the ground right now. And we are going converting to drive block fundamentals and we're drive blocking a 45 degree knee, okay? If we get a 90 degree knee, which is our third look off the scooch, now we're gonna hip flipper, okay? And basically we turn that into a covered gap combo because it's on my backside half. So my, my, my covered hip is gonna go vertical through the movement. I'm gonna flipper. With my inside flipper, I'm going to pump my outside arm like we talked about in the, uh, in the cover gap combo uh, right. yesterday uh, or last week, I'm sorry. I'm going to pump my offhand. I'm going to drive my covered hip vertical through the movement and keep my back or my uncovered foot. I want to keep it back so I can angle out for further movement coming at me or backer coming over the top of that movement, okay? So that's the three knees that when we teach the uncovered gap combo, that's the three knees. Now, I've got here, uh, excuse me, block versus gap, okay? As a center, okay, our centers are gonna make that call what this, what this guard is gonna do, okay? He's gonna decide based off of a couple different factors if we want the double team fit here, or if we want the double team fit here, okay? And like we talked about, we want to try to pump air in that thing as much as we can, but there's a couple instances where we wouldn't necessarily pump air where we may go ahead and call the double team right here, okay? And I want to go through those real quick just because I feel like that's a, a, a big part of it. First off, the alignment of the backer that, we're, that, that, that uh, this combo is working to. If this backer were aligned zero this guard right here, we feel like he can be a big threat to possibly minus the combo, okay? Then that center may go ahead and call his guard down to him and create, in effect, what is a covered gap combo because now we're double teaming the nose. And then we would refer back to the, uh, to the covered gap combo uh, fundamentals and how we're handling that. So first is the alignment of that backer, okay? Second thing, if we feel like we've got a low and inside safety, okay, which now would give this backer, if he, uh, if he were aligned in a normal alignment, but that safety is low and inside, we feel like that safety is going to be the possibly the run fitter so this backer can backfit that. So if we are not in a situation where we re-ID to the safety, then 
that center may bring his guard down with him and we wouldn't actually pump air because of where the safety's location is. Uh, and if we were handling the safety with a receiver blocking or something like that, we were not in a situation where we were re-IDing it up front, then we would make that a minus combo and a cover gap combo rather than an uncovered gap combo. And then the third way, which, which I don't have on here, but if, we, if this backer is a normal alignment, okay, but we tell the offensive line that, hey, we are divide zoning and we're bringing our fullback or our tight end backside to split zone, then we expect different reactions out of backers on split zone or divide zone. So we would call this combination differently uh, based off of those three factors. So I think that's important uh, for people to know that, hey, every look is not exactly the same. It's not cookie cutter. Uh, there's some factors that go into uh, why the double teams fit, where they fit, uh, how we call the double teams. Do we make this the double team between the guard and tackle, or does the center call the call the guard down? And then there's some matchup issues too. Hey, if if this nose right here is a, I mean, is an unbelievable player. Uh, if we're playing against Ted Laurent, we may we may double team that right there rather than cut this guard loose so so our center's not in a one-on-one -on -one situation, okay? So uh, I think there's a lot of factors that go into how you're double teaming that I thought was very, very important to talk about. But we're gonna look at, hey, we are doing that combo right here now. We've already covered if we're, call, if we're calling that combo right there, okay? So here's just some drill work uh, of it. You can kind of see, uh, how we drill it, but this guard, so we're in that combo, so he is comboing an uncovered gap. There's nobody in the gap. We want to knee read that dude right there, okay? I don't get knee at me, okay? He sees that. We see it out of our peripheral, okay? You can see as long as that stripe is vertical, okay, on his helmet, uh, we can see that knee out of our peripheral. Now, remember, you're seeing us bucket step here where next year we're actually going to take a small scooch, and we talked about the scooch last time. That footwork will be no different than what we talked about uh, last week when we talked about the scooches, okay? We'll baby scooch that, okay? And now you can see him stick his inside hand to feel for violent movement from the nose. That way if the center needs the help, okay? And then he's going to climb vertical to back her out of that, and I think we do a really good job of getting vertical with the inside foot right here. A lot of times you'll see guys cross over with that inside foot, and now that guard is going to run a bow. Or if this were a tackle tight end combo, okay, that tackle will run a bow. And I'm going to show you some film here in just a second of one of my guys running a bow, which really, really upsets me. He was a great player, though. Love the dude to death. He's from right across the border. Uh, right across Windsor in Detroit. He's from Detroit, the guy I'm going to show you on film. It's actually this tackle right here. But I think this is a very good clip of that second step getting vertical off of the knee read, okay, and then using the backside hand. All right, now, same, same drill. Now, hey, I got 45-degree knee coming at me. This is not 90-degree knee. This is 45-degree knee. That knee is not opening, and that hip is not opening. So we want to get the second step in the ground in a hurry. The inside foot gets in the ground in a hurry, and now that is drive block fundamentals right there, okay? I don't like how high we are right here, and I don't like that we're losing our base a little bit right here, okay? I want to maintain our base right here a little bit better. Um, not a great look by, by the defense, okay? Also, great look right here uh, on our center. He's, he's by himself. He's solo. But remember, behind him is going to be a combo where that guard is going to be load and look. Anytime we load, we look. Now, we're getting movement right here, so that backside guard is going to helmet redirect, and we're creating a combo here off of the movement, okay? And you can see our center working that fit. There's your hip flipper right there. His, his hip is going through. We're flippering the movement. 
and we're keeping the uncovered hand free and you can see him pumping the uncovered hand. Again, I would like to elbow tighter to the body right there. Okay, but some good fundamental work that you're seeing right there. Would like our tackle. Now, our tackles are going to chase movement a little bit more than the other positions because of where the ball is in relation to these blocks. I want to ensure, so we teach our play side tackles, you stick that movement a lot more than maybe other positions will. And if we're a little bit crossed over on movement coming over the top, it's not a big deal to me because I know we've secured that and I know the ball's staying up inside because of what the reads are doing. That ball's never going to get out to that block right there. So we allow that, we allow our tackle to chase with his outside hand right there a little bit more than we do with other positions. I want to ensure that that is handled, that penetration right there, okay? Now, some game film of it, okay? Uh, so we're looking at our left guard here, and, and this is versus no movement right now, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple of really good movements uh, later, but you can see, okay, he's periphering, he's periphering the knee, okay? He's got backside hand for violent movement, on the nose right here, and we called this, this center said, hey, I can handle this one-on-one, -on -one. let's pump air in this right here, uh, and you can see, in effect, we're trapping that outside to create lateral distortion. Remember, we want lateral distortion, okay? So we want to try to create lateral distortion in the front side of this play and maintain the bubbles in the defense, uh, and then the back is reading the first down defender, front side of the ball. And now you can see a covered gap combo back here. That's exactly what we talked about last week uh, with a covered gap combo. So there's a good picture of both type of combos right here. Now, I told you, hey, it, ain't a, it isn't all good. Watch my right tackle right here. Uncovered gap combo, tackle tight end combo. We're comboing out to center ID, P, that backer right there. So we are comboing out to uh, a defender outside, and Braden, I'm gonna move mine and yours picture, which you probably can't see, but we're actually comboing to an overhang. But now this is what we don't want. You can see that tackle crossing over, and we're running a little bit of a bow right here. I don't want us to do that. That ball is gonna stay up inside of us. Uh, we get really lucky. The back kind of bounces, uh, ends up bouncing this ball out here to us. I think if the ball would have stayed vertical right here, which a lot of times it will, this tackle is going to get beaten over the top because, hey, we're crossing over. I get knee up the field or away from me, I should be going vertical uh, right there, which we're not. We're crossing over and we're kind of running a bow, and we get lucky. I don't like the fundamentals. I don't like the pad level. I don't like the, uh, uh, the second step at all right here in, in what we're doing. So this is one of the big reasons we're changing our footwork. Next year, this guy will be scooching, so his hips will stay very square. One of the things that I need to talk about as well, I think it's important when we're uncover gap combo that we stay lateral initially with our footwork and our head that way, if we're getting violent movement coming from the backside, uh, we can deal with that movement. And we're going to talk about that uh, here right after this clip. We're going to get into some movement things. Uh, but, Braden, any questions on uncover gap combos? Does, does that make sense? No, that's, that's great. And, Coach, I think, you know, the detail, again, that you've gone into here is, is so helpful for our viewers. Um, it's an unbelievable job. And, and uh, there's a lot of people getting better – better with this and I know uh, we alluded to this last week I think this next section is going to help a lot of people because if you're not seeing movement you're about to um so I'm really excited and for this next portion as well well uh, let me jump right into it because because I've got a, I've got a good many uh clips both fundamental uh drill clips as well as uh a couple game clips that I want to get into uh, but but the big thing, men, uh, to me in, in teaching handling movement is doing it from day one. Uh, when we start day one progression of teaching uh, of inside zone, 
we start right away teaching movement uh, because we know we're going to see it. Uh, like I said last week, uh, we've been really, really good uh, at, at, at Ohio at running the football. Uh, the last th over the last three years, we're third in the country in yards per carry. Uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Last year, we were seventh in the country in yards per carry. Um, we average over six yards a carry on the inside zone, and uh, we, we, we run it 70% of the time. So people are trying to do things to stop our inside zone and take it away. And one of the ways they're doing it is moving the front, whether that be uh, run twist and run games, or whether that be movement through run pressures uh, to, tr to try to stop us with pressures. So uh, we're seeing it, uh, I don't know a percentage of time, but I know it's a, it's, a, it's a great percentage of time. So when we talk about handling movement, um, you're gonna always hear me, the first thing I'm gonna say is, your eyes have to be in the proper place, and you've gotta teach that from day one. Um, you know, part of a combo, and I think you've already heard me talk about it many times, a big part of us handling movement is we're looking where we're supposed to be looking. Um, and, and uh, yes, footwork, yes, hand placement, uh, yes, hat placement. All of those things are super, super important. But I think eye placement is just as important and maybe most important uh, fundamental in handling movement. So teaching guys where they're supposed to be looking and what they are supposed to be looking for, um, I think is super, super important. Um, and I'm going to show you that on film. Then the second thing that I think is vitally important, uh, and we have a lot of big runs where we create stake offs and we stake off the movement. So if we're getting movement front side, and we're running the inside zone to that direction where the movement is going. Uh, we see the movement, and now we put our foot in the ground, and we stake the movement off that's coming from the back side, and we force the defense to get out of gap because we stake that movement off, and we don't allow it to get to the gap that it's supposed to get to. And that's what we call a stake off. And to be honest with you guys, we, we, uh, uh, we have, you know, everybody has pancake awards and they keep up with can't pancake blocks. Guys, we keep up with stake off blocks um, because we know that if we stake a defense off that is moving and we don't allow them to get to the gap that they're supposed to get to, there are huge runs and, and violent explosives uh, in staking off the defense and not, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, you've heard me mention it several, several times, uh, but lateral footwork and lateral head, uh, lateral head with that footwork. Uh, if we want our bucket step to go six inches and go lateral, then our head must mirror that and our head goes six inches and go lateral. If our foot goes lateral, but our head's going forward, uh, we're not truly lateral. I don't care what the step's doing if the head doesn't mirror it. Uh, your footwork and your body is going to follow your head. So if you're leaning and, 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 and leaking forward with your head, you're going to follow your head. So it is imperative that when we have the opportunity. Now, if we're drive blocking, we're not going lateral. We're going at the defender. But if we're helping in any way, uh, we are lateral with our footwork like we've already talked about uh, just a minute ago when we talked about the uncovered gap combo. When we're on the backside, when we're cutting off, uh, when our backside tackle is scooching to overtake, he must be lateral uh, both footwork-wise and with his hat. And then the fourth thing that I think is, is very, very important is when we do have movement, that we lateral helmet redirection to the movement. So even if I'm on a drive block and my helmet is going forward uh, to drive block, when I get movement, our helmet must snap and go lateral and get our eyes lateral and get lateral down the line of scrimmage because if not, movement is gonna hit us in the hip 
rather than us getting uh, in the sternum or in front of movement. And I think those are super important fundamentals. What's that, Braden? No, no, I think just the lateral, you know, the lateral portion of, of what you're talking about and keeping, you know, keeping your head and helmet and, and your feet together and your body trying to stay symmetrical is so, so important. I know when I was coaching quarterbacks, talking about keeping symmetrical with your body, it's, it's so important to, you know, engage in that core and putting yourself in a good position. Um, yes. And I think it's, you know, across, doesn't matter what position we're talking about here, but, you know, keeping symmetrical and keeping that, you know, that head and your, your head and your feet moving in the same position is huge. Yes. And then the, the other thing is uh, the body position, your lower body position. And I, and I think I kind of went back to this picture uh, because I think you can see we're in the middle of steps right here, but the bend in our knees uh, allows us to redirect and handle movement. Uh, if if the head is going forward, uh, then the the legs are going to tend to straighten. Um, which now uh, with straight legs, I can't adjust and move to things. So, like you said, Brady, body position uh, is a is super super important. Um, now, uh, you know we don't we don't we don't sit on the line of scrimmage and look for movement. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things that you can get yourself caught up in. Uh, we're not coming off the ball and attacking the defense. Uh, if you start, we begin every practice in the shoot running off of the ball. I, we teach run. We, we want to be running off the football violently uh, off the line of scrimmage to block the inside zone. Uh, we're not taking steps. And looking, so I, I don't want people to, to, to get confused. I think it's super, super important that you learn to do this as you are violently exploding off of the line of scrimmage on the angle of departure that you need to uh, depart the line of scrimmage to get to the landmarks that you need to get to. Uh, but if you don't, guys will just – they will kind of stay in their stance and their eyes are all over the place initially. You have to force linemen to run off the football, but then have their eyes where they're supposed to be and then have that operate the way it's supposed to operate as they are running off the football. Um, that's why I really like the scooch uh, because it allows the guy to really violently go fast, but also – stay a little bit louder. So we're bringing, we're bringing some violence and some, and some, uh, some uh, energy to the block, even though I'm putting their bodies in a position to handle movement, if that makes sense. But I, I wanted to go back, and I know we're talking about movement, but a big part of us being so successful running the inside zone is that our guys run off the football, okay? Um, so just a couple things like we talked about, look, uh, where are your eyes? What are your eyes doing? And we've already seen this show up on, on tape. Um, and we've already seen, but you can see our guys, hey, what are their eyes doing? Their eyes, I think when you work drill work, that is a very huge part of, of what you're teaching. Where are the eyes, where are the eyes going versus movement? So this is the first drill of the first day. This is the first day in the shoots. Now, we've already done a drill in the shoots where we are running our butt off the football uh, on the drive block. Okay, so now I want them running off the football here, but now we're getting movement. So, hey, we transition right out of running off the football into a drive block into how we handle movement uh, right after. This is day one in the shoot, and you should see us Okay, you should see us hip flipper like we talk about. So when I say hip flipper, that covered hip is going into contact and we are flipping with the backside half. And then this offhand should be pumping, but our eyes should snap and look front side. Now the backside tackle is scooching and he is in a sift block. So he knows 
you can see Coach Langenkamp here, uh, my, my assistant, uh, he is working the tackle on a SIF. So we're, we're handling SIF movement uh, a little bit different. That's why you're not seeing his eyes go front side. Sometimes they put their eyes front side because of where their, their ID is. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I don't, okay? So he is working SIFT on the backside versus movement right here, okay? Now, great job here. You can see, hey, here it is versus movement. Here's the tackle sifting, okay? But now I don't have a SIFT rule on the tackle. You can see his eyes snap and look front side. I snap and look front side. I snap and look front side. Now, the other thing you see is when I blow the whistle to get them out of the combo, there's our angle step. The knee opens, the toe opens to get our hips going. Great job of overemphasizing it right here by this tackle. You can really see these guys overemphasizing, hey, we want to open the knee and open the toe so those hips open. We don't want to cross over right there. That's what we kind of talked about last week, and you can see us fundamentally doing it. Great job here of pumping the offhand okay, and keeping the covered hip high in that movement. But just a minute ago when we talked about, hey, hip flipper, 90-degree movement, this is what we're uh, – this is the same fundamental right here. So I didn't show you drill work of that because we do it every day. That's awesome. All right, now we talk about state calls, okay. So this is a backside guard scooching to a – a right here, okay? He is comboing with the center, all right? But I get movement away from me on the scooch. So now he knows that center's overtaking that. We want to stick the opposite foot, opposite shoulder. This becomes very violent and very powerful. You can see him delivering hard and violent back into the movement. There's the stake off right there. This guy was trying to get across our face into this gap. We stake that off. The tackle is overtaking it now, and now they are out of pattern of defense. But here's the stake off, and we start this from day one. You can see this is the same day, the same drill that we were working, the step drill, and we were looking. This is day one installation drill work-wise, handling movements. So I'm scooching. Hey, on the front side, we, this would be the uncovered gap combo. Okay, or we're a cover gap combo. That guy slants outside. Bam, we're going to stake off right here and stop movement. Stop movement in the defense. And now there's going to be a big crease. Hey, and there's your angle step. There's your angle step. So we work in hip angles. Okay, we're working hip angles to the backer. Okay, and, and blocking backers is a whole different topic. Okay, now. Hey, we scooch, we scooch, and movement happens, okay? But now this movement is so lateral that I can't stake it off. We call this the stake and rake. So now I want to stake and rake that and torque that across my face, which is now going to clean up my backside lineman to climb to the second level, whoever that backside lineman is, okay? So we call this a stake and rake. Another way that we, we work handling movement, my fault. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And now you can see us, okay? Hey, we are low delivering right here. What do the eyes do? The eyes are there. We are looking where we're supposed to be looking. And then here, here Braden, is your lateral helmet redirection. See the helmet going laterally when he sees movement. Super huge fundamental because if he didn't go lateral with that helmet, it, then his that foot would go up the field and now movement would be on his hip rather than him getting his body in front of movement where he could handle the movement. Okay, so just different drill work things. I'm going to show you a bunch of – so here's our center. Same thing. He is comboing with the backside guard on this nose to that backer right there. But anytime we load, we look. You can see his eyes going to that gap right there. Hey, there's the hip flipper. Now, our eyes snap front side right there, okay? If I don't get movement coming at me, 
I'm going to stay to my to my ID. But lateral lateral helmet redirection by the center right here. You can see our backside guard is in scooch technique. We scooch any tight shade or any head up nose. Because now if my center has to leave me, I'm in good position to make that block. Here it is again. Great look. Look at the eyes. Look at the eyes, Braden. I'm low delivering. I'm doubling right here. I'm low delivering, but watch the, watch the hat flatten. Helmet, lateral helmet redirection, I think is a huge fundamental so that now that's not on our hip. Because if that's on our hip, that guy's going to get penetration right there, and, and we don't want penetration. By him being lateral, this frees this guy up now to going ahead and being able to work to movement there or work to our, our uh, landmark. You can see our guard snap his eyes and look for movement. He doesn't see it. He's climbing to the backer. Here it is. Hey, we're working a double team on the backside, and center gets movement across his face. He's going to hip flipper. But now, watch our guard. Load deliver helmet redirection helmet redirection, okay, to get, and now, remember we talked about, hey, there's that nonverbal communication, see the guard, nonverbal communication to get him out, to force him out, to shove him out, all huge things in uh, teaching of uh, uh, movement, hey, these are day one, day one fits right here, again, Helmet lateral, uh, lateral helmet redirection, hip flipper and hip carry movement. That way I'm not falling out on my face right there, keeping my front side arm uncovered, not chasing the movement with my off hand now. Okay? I think it's huge. And then we start putting it together as a whole group. I'm just kind of showing you, hey, individual to group to 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 uh, to to pods then to the entire group uh, drill work. So now, same thing. Hey, uncover gap combo here, okay? We're getting movement right here. We call it a backside combo, but now guard is snapping eyes. Center is hip flipper, keeping the offhand. Again, I'd love that elbow tighter. That's something we need to work on. I keep seeing that show up. We need to work on it more. Keep that elbow tighter, but we're not falling out on our face, and we're driving our hip through, and now we just sort out the ID right here. So here's some game cuts of it, uh, of handling movement, okay? We're running belly left here, inside zone left. Drive block, remember, I told you our play side tackle, he is gonna, he is gonna be thick in movement, we are very aware, and we're going to baby step. Um, we're going to baby step because we're very aware for that movement. We see a ton of that movement right there, okay? All right, so when you watch our play side tackle right here, you can see he's basically using inside footwork. He knew movement was happening or he anticipated movement to happen. And remember I said, hey, I want him to hang – in that a little bit longer uh, to protect that guard because that guard's drive blocking right there. Now, I should get his eyes snapping outside versus movement, okay? Center is comboing to that backer right there, okay? A lot of times we may, in a lot of places I've uh, been before, uh, before I really started, we started getting so much movement, uh, we would actually make a three-way combo call because of that backer's alignment right there. Right. But right here, we are not in a three-way combo. I feel like we are always in a three-way combo because of what we teach our eyes to do. I used to always get frustrated as a coach because we didn't see as much movement. Um, we had defensive look cues to get us into – uh, three-way combos or, or whole line or full line combos uh, because we didn't, we didn't have our eyes operate as they should, as I've learned, to handle movement. 
Now we don't need a three-way combo right here. We are always in a three-way combo. And what you're fixing to see is really we're always in a full line combo. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I can't get my, thing, my, my mouse to work right. Uh, we're always in a full line combo because of what our eyes do. Okay? Center, great. He's trying to drive block it. But to him, that became, hey, that's a 90-degree knee right there, right? Remember we said, see how, see how that knee is opening up and that guy's trying to cross my face. He's not going one gap over. So now that center is going to try to hip flipper, but you can see him. What do his eyes do, Braden? Back up. And movement front side right there. So he ends up comboing a five technique across a three technique right here. What do the what do the guards' eyes do? He's cutting this off. Right. That guard. Watch his eyes snap with movement. Watch that lateral helmet redirection. Now he's what nonverbal communication. Get your center out of there. Get him out of there. We need him. And there's your lateral scooch and lateral head on the back side. Hey, on our cutoff, lateral bucket, lateral head. Huge important fundamentals, Braden, to be able to handle movement. But I don't think we're slow off the ball. We're not, it's not like we're looking and waiting on movement. You can see we've got energy off the line of scrimmage. We're trying to run off the football and be the hammer, not the nail. And I wish our guard right here would have felt his center a little bit earlier and climbed up to this backside backer, and now our back would be running scot-free, uh, and that safety would have had to make the play with no help from there. But that's a lot of movement happening, and we're in two-man combos. We're in a combo here and a combo here. But you can see it went to full, full-line combos because of what guys did. No, and I think that's, you know, I think, you know, you're talking about about being, you know, being violent in the movement. And I think your eyes, the way – it's an unbelievable job, Coach. You know, and I think that's such a big point, and you've touched on it already. But being – the eyes are allowing you to be violent and vertical through that, all yes. that movement. So we're still – um, we're changing the line of scrimmage, in my opinion, which is what our job is to do. Uh, we're just able to handle and see movement um, um, as we, you know, as we do that. Um, here we're going to be working out, okay, we, we, we're working out to this safety right here. So this is a push ID for us, okay. But, again, we're getting movement. So remember earlier, uncover gap combo. 90 degree knee, okay? So we should be hip flipper in this, all right? We're a little bit late. He, he didn't know because the knee doesn't really open violently right here. Right. So he thinks it's drive block rules, but then he feels his center push him out of it. So, hey, let me get my butt out to that backer right there. Right. So I kind of wanted you to show you there are some in-between looks. Hey, everything's not – Super clean. Great job by the center here. He gets he gets backdoor movement. He's hip flippering and his eyes snap front side, and we get lateral helmet redirection. If he goes vertical because he thinks he's going to that backer right there, this is going to pick him in the hip. Huge, huge, important fundamental. Okay, so I'm kind of covering front side movement that's going against the flow of the zone. And I think eyes and lateral helmet redirections are the most important part of handling that. And in just a minute, we're going to start getting backside movement or movement that goes with the flow of the zone. And then our stakeoffs are hugely important. You can see we're going plus one on all of these movements because of where the direction of the movement is coming from. Right. Okay. Later, you're going to see we're going to sit down on movement and stake off movement and create seams because of it. But really good work. And then, hey, teaching right here on this backside tackle versus movement, 
He is scooching. You can see he is scooching right there. If he gets contact by that movement, he is going to stick movement, okay? You're going to see here in just a minute against Marshall, that movement violently worked outside of him. If he gets violent movement outside of him, he's going to stay on the move. So if that movement would have happened violently and not contacted him, he would make the decision, hey, our back's going to be past that movement. Let me go ahead and sift up to something else, which is what we you, I showed you guys just a minute ago where Coach Langenkamp was showing him working across or Coach Langenkamp was not. That's how we drill this backside tackle. You can see he felt like he needed to sit down on that movement because it's – I tell him, hey, it, it, if movement sticks you, you stick it. If movement doesn't stick you, you sift it. Right. Again, front side movement, right guard, watch his, hey, watch his eyes, snaps his eyes right now because he got movement, and then lateral helmet redirection, going laterally. Remember we said, hey, that tackle's going to protect him a little bit more. This is the reason. I'm not worried, honestly, about that backer on belly because our inside zone is not getting out there. Right. Now, if we're running wide zone, totally different animal, totally different footworks, totally different conversation, uh, totally different what we're going to do with this tackle. Now, that tackle is going to rip through, and he's going to work to the next level right now. But this tackle is protecting his guard so right. that we don't have penetration right there. All right, now, let's start talking about backside movement. So we'll start talking about stake-offs, okay? So we're comboing here to this backer. We're comboing here to that backer right there, okay? There's your scooch. Tackle scooch, okay? Center's comboing. Now, he saw pre-snap, so he's just popping his feet because he knew what was coming. Hey, play side tackle. We're not trying to go kill this five technique because we got to handle movement. Look at a switch movement on the front side. The guard felt width, and he shoved that out over the tackle, and now he's getting vertical to the, to the dropper right there. Center, there's our stake off and rake. Right. Okay. Hey, if, if it would have ended up on my backside hip, I would have staked it off and shut down banged it, and then climbed the backer. But it raked across, so I torque it across my face, and now that's going to clean up the guard. Here's a stake off right here that hit me in the shoulder. So I'm going to stake it off, and now I'm looking to climb the backer, but backer work back door, so I just sit and now tackle climbs out to the backer. Again, this became a full line. Great job by our tight end right here, okay? Also, just a heads up, why is our center blocking this like this? We have told the center that this is divide zone. Right. We expect this backer to be back fitting, so he's going to be a little bit tighter in that combo. If we didn't tell him divide zone, he would cut loose a little bit more in that combo to, to that backer because of that backer's alignment. Okay, super huge. We've already talked about it. Guys, tell your guys what's going on behind them because it's going to affect what the defense does. We can't combo this the same exact way. If we're running inside zone left and our tight end's already back here versus if he's coming across the formation, we're going to get different reactions from the defense. We must tell our offensive line that and teach them that. But now we're seeing backdoor movement. Here's a great example of the reason I have this in. There's a stake and rake, and there's a stake off right there. Now, our back chooses to go back here, okay? Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything about that. I guarantee you Coach Alvin would be telling, hey, we've got front side color. You stick that ball front side right there. But that's not the, that's not the topic 
but there's the stake off and there's the stake and rake. Handling backside movement with our eyes and then either a stake off or a stake and rake. And then I'm gonna say also the most important thing is lateral step, lateral head. You can see our heads were not going forward right there, okay? All right, we're running belly left right here. Stake offs. We are double teaming this nose to that backer right there. We are out, out on the front side right here. So you're gonna see, and, and we, knew, we knew movement was coming right here because of the look, okay? So our guard, but here's what I wanna talk about. Hey, this backside guard, now there's our stake and bam, there's the violent rake. Such a important fundamental. If he doesn't violently throw that movement, now the tackle never gets out to that backer right there. It right. gets that tackle up to get up to that backer. So here's a picture. Hey, we knew this movement was coming. I, I, you know, pre-snap, we, we had a good indication that this movement was happening. So you can see my guard's a little bit different right here, okay? Um, my, this backside guard already knows movement's happening, but – the part of the conversation is, and now look at the center trying to rake and pull that right there to get this guard free. But there's the stake, and now violently torque the movement. If you can't stake it off, if it's continuing to move across your face, you rake it and torque it front side, and there's big side, big, big time runs right there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Here's a stake off. Again, the right guard. Great job by the left guard here, okay? But the right guard. We're getting, hey, that nose is running from me. I am out of that double team right now, and now I'm staking off. There's the stake off, and there's the climb. The exact look that you saw on the drill that we worked earlier on day one where I scooch, Movement happens away from me, I'm staking off. Now, if that would have crossed his face, he would have raked it just like we just saw, and now that would have cleaned the tackle up. But here, hey, opposite foot, opposite shoulder to be violent, to stop it, and now they've lost pattern of the defense. So using the movement to our advantage. And here we talked about the backside tackle just a minute ago on the scooch. That movement does not stick him. So he, now he's looking for dropper to safety right here. You can see he sees safety. Now, I wish our tight end would have kept on coming and actually worked up to the, to the full player right here, okay, who ends up making the play. Uh, but I just wanted to show you this backside tackle rule versus movement. We saw one a minute ago where he stuck it, and now here's one where it's violent movement. He's stopping because he's looking for full player and then to high safety right there. And, Braden, I think, uh, I think we've hit about an hour again. Uh, but there's, there's some uncovered gap combo work, and, and, and there's some, uh, some, some work versus movement. And the four fundamentals that I think are so vitally important are number one, look. Where are your eyes? What are your eyes looking for? Uh, either in your fundamentals or when there's movement happen. Teach the guys what they do with their eyes. Secondly, violent lateral helmet redirection versus movement. If I get movement, whether I see it or whether it moves across my face, my helmet and my, eye, my eyes must snap first, but now that helmet must snap and go lateral. Because if I stay vertical at all, movement is going to hit me in the hip and we're going to give penetration up right there, okay? Thirdly is the stake off and then the stake off and rake. Um, uh, and then um, fourthly, okay, I think I combined, I combined uh, a couple of those. I'm so excited I can't remember. Hey, man are but hey look look oh the fourth one is hey make sure that when you are in a situation whether it's backside guard and backside tackle our backside tackle is always lateral in his footwork our backside guard is not lateral 
he's working with his center. If he's working with his with his tackle, he is low deliver, and we are getting up the field. But now I'm looking on the load. Important to teach him to look, okay? And then anytime we're in an uncover gap combo, lateral head uh, with lateral footwork. That's the fourth, uh, fourth fundamental that I think is super, super important. Guys, teach your guys to run off the football when you're teaching zone, but teach them what to do with their eyes um, and, and, and what they need to do versus where the movement's coming from. Um, and, and I think you'll, you'll find success, and I think there's a ton of big plays in movement. Uh, sometimes we have a hard time knocking people off the ball, uh, but, but movement helps us get movement. Right. It helps us create big running plays. So, hey, you know, I had a guy tell me one time, uh, hey, when you hit a golf ball in, uh, in, in the sand, most of the time you're usually close to the green. So don't look at it as a negative that you're into the that you're in the sand. Look at it a lot of time as a positive because you're really close to the green. Uh, you're close. You're close to putting the ball in the hole. So don't get don't get upset if you hit a ball in, in, in a sand in a sand bunker. You know, hey, be excited because you're close to the green. I think that's kind of how we look at movement. Right. Hey, we want we want movement. Uh, because because I think that allows us to create some awfully big plays uh, and, and to create some seams in the defense. No, no, absolutely. And I think, uh, again, Coach, such an unbelievable job. And I think – and I thank you so much for, for all of this. Um, coaches, if you're not seeing movement and if you're not teaching movement, I think it's so important, like Coach Rudolph said, let's get on it on day one, um, spend time with it. Build it into the drills you're already doing. It's super important. And uh, allow your guys to play violent and vertical and, and, and be the hammer, not the nail, as Coach said. So unbelievable job, Coach. Um, thank you so much for this. I think we got, we got people better. I know I got better um, because of this. Um, man, I can't thank you enough. Brayden, I know Jackson isn't on with us. I hope he has a great day with his grandfather today. Um, but uh, anytime you guys need anything, I appreciate this opportunity. Anytime uh, I get an opportunity to share uh, stuff that I have gotten from somebody else, um, you know, very little of what I do is stuff that I've come up with. It's just uh, stuff that I see from, from watching uh, film, studying film. Um, you know, I don't play golf. I know I used a golf reference, but um, I don't play golf, um, you know, I hang out with my wife and my two beautiful daughters, um, and, and really that everything else for me, my hobby is football. So anytime I get a free moment, I try to steal uh, some time to watch other people's uh, line, to learn from them, uh, to watch defenses, to watch coverages. Um, you know, anything that that I can do to pick something up, uh, I think is very very important. So uh, very little of what I do is 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 have I come up with, I've seen somebody else do it, or I've watched clinics and, and uh, hear them do it. And there's a lot that we do that's wrong, that, that you can learn, uh, that you can learn how not to do things from, from what we do. But, but hopefully there's something that, that I shared that, that maybe will help, help somebody. And uh, I just thank you and, and Jackson for the opportunity to uh, uh, continue uh, football, uh, man, it's it's such an unbelievable game. Uh, it te teaches so many life lessons uh, to the youth uh, of our world, whether it be in Canada, whether it be in Ma uh, America. Hey, football, uh, they're playing 11-man football in Japan, you know, and that teaches so many life lessons uh, to the young, to the youth of our world that that I think ultimately makes makes our world a better place. Um, that is so much bigger than who who ends up winning on the scoreboard. Uh, that any time I get an opportunity to to, to talk it, um, you know, I, I look forward to that opportunity. And anytime you need me, guys, uh, need me on to, uh, I would love to do it.